Yes. Sir. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. Welcome to the AICTE IEST sponsored refresher program on the recent trends in signal processing RTSP 2022, organized by the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Narula Institute of Technology. We are very fortunate today as we have amongst us Professor Shubhu Shachi Mukhopadhyay from Macout, West Bengal. Professor Shubhu Shachi Mukhopadhyay is an assistant professor of business analytics in postgraduate management studies at BAMS Kolkata, affiliated to Macout. Professor Mukhopadhyay was a project scientist in nanoscope technologies for a brief period of time. Mukhopadhyay did his BTEC in EC from the CM Kolagat in 2012, and Professor Mukhopadhyay received MS in Physical Sciences from the IISCR Kolkata, and was the topper in 2015 batch. He is the SCORES curriculum developer, paper setter, examiner, moderator for the MacOut University of Calcutta, Techno India University, SCIT Pune. He has more than 55 publications, which include patent books, journals, and proceedings. His findings on AI-based retinal diseases detection and AI-based early stage cancer detection has been highlighted in all leading newspapers like the Hindu, the Economic Times, the Indian Express, Business Standard, Daily World, as well as on the television channels like Z News, Odisha TV, News SX, News World India. His research success also has been featured in leading national and international tech magazines like the eHealth, Analytics in India magazine, the Better India Biospectrum. Professor Mukhopadhyay delivered invited talks, served as panelist, judge of hackathons in leading IITs, IIACRs, NITs, IIEST Shippur, and many leading state central universities of India he also delivered invited talks in foreign universities like the University of Global Village, Bangladesh, University of Kofi, and the Guinea and Guinea. And he has also been in many reputed states over there. Professor Mukhopadhyay received an honorary mention in the government official site of Embassy of India to Switzerland for his research. So we are very fortunate, sir, as we have you with us on this particular day and i would like to request the organizers to felicitate sir with the flower bouquet on behalf of the ec department we are going to felicitate you with this small flower bouquet sir kindly accept yes sir please accept this thank you thank you so much Thank you so much. So, thank you, sir. And the session is all yours, sir. Over to you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for this generous introduction. It's my honor to be here. And thank you very much to the organizing committee for inviting me here. So it's really pleasure that in the first day when I interacted with the, our respected audiences, it was a great experience for me as well. Now, today we are going to start another session that, is, that will be basically dedicated to the modern deep learning architecture. So in a nutshell, which I want to highlight that what we have discussed in the very beginning of the first day, that that was most, mostly on the uh, deep learning architectures which we have explored so there we started with the data manipulation then we talked about auto automatic differentiation we talked about dropout okay dropout layers how we can remove the overfitting with the help of dropout then we talked about the multi-layer perceptions and finally we explored uh, that how to take data set download data set from kaggle and we tried to predict the house pricing uh, uh, Boston based house pricing, and then how can you re generate the report in a CSV file of your model accuracy and can upload in and Kaggle? So, all those things we have explored on the on first day. So, today our main target will be to explore on the direction of the modern deep learning architectures, which comprises of, for example, AlexNet or. Uh, we can make a comparisons with the linet that what are the shortcomings in the linet there and how we have overcome them with the help of the alexnet we will also talk about bgg net inception net or 
or ResNet, this kind of the architectures, which are the state of art architecture, which has been developed in last uh, over the period of a decade. So, uh, uh, just let me give you the overview. What, uh, why we are we are now going to discuss about the architectures like the VGGNet and what are the benefits of it. So, first of all, let me uh, let me share the screen. Just a second. <clears throat> So I think the screen is visible to all of you. So this is the basically notebook of the BG, BGG net. So I would request all the respected participants to kindly open your uh, uh, Google note, uh, Google Colab, okay? Uh, and please open a new notebook, which you can give a name as the demo Alex net or something like that. But I will I will share the code in your comment box like like I have done last day, and you can reproduce the results. So it will give you the idea that how you can you can generate those results and you can get get those outcomes optimum outcomes after the evaluation. So uh, just a second, uh, uh, let me uh, just open a new notebook there. So what you can do, uh, what I am doing, that you see that from file, you, if you already open the notebook. Uh, if you have the existing notebook opened, you can do it, open the new notebook by just typing on the going, clicking on the uh, file button and just open on the new notebook section. Okay. Or you can simply do it by searching in Google as well. Like I have shown you last day that Google Colab. Okay. And you can open a new notebook from here as well. Okay. So like, for example, we can come uh, click on the welcome to collaboratory button and just you see in the below. There is a pop up in a color of blue link, a blue color pop up is there. So just click on that, a new notebook will be opened. Okay, so once you open the new notebook, basically what you will find that plus code and plus text options are there. You can click on plus text to require any kind of adding some text or instructions, and plus code button is there where you will add up some codes and you click on the run cell button. Okay, then your output will come up. Okay, so uh, for example, here also you can see uh, this particular notebook I'm going to show you. So I, what I'm doing you, uh, doing basically here that giving some name there, for example, demo AlexNet. So we, we, I'm giving a name, demo AlexNet. So where we will, we will explore our coding portion there. So uh, just to give you a brief overview that how the AlexNet has been evolved, uh, basically. So all those theoretical details are given. Already those who have gone through the notebooks which I shared earlier, you have seen that not only the coding portion, but necessary theory portions are also added there. Brief overview on mathematics and other relevant theories are given there. So here also in this kind of notebook, which we are going to explore in the direction of the modern deep learning architectures. So all the necessary theories, uh, coding portions, everything will be there. So basically, you see that, uh, <clears throat> like we I have discussed in the last, last uh, uh, class on the last session on the angle of the deep learning, that the mathematical development uh, has been made over the deep learning in 1980s. And basically, in 1988, when the Linet came up first, developed by the Yale Lekun, it was the one of the first premium architecture of the deep learning, but it was a very in a naive stage. You can't actually uh, do a lot on, on those kind of the architectures because the problem was that uh, that first of all you don't have those kind of the processor supports. It's not about the mathematical development or the coding development, but you require the processor supports in those era. For example, you don't have the support of GPU or TPU, and primarily storing of the last data set was another problem because deep learning can be performance wise scalable when you have your data in order to take the power five. And there was a lack of the activation function as well. Okay, so for example, in those era, the ad, nobody has thought that ReLU can be used as an activation function. Like we have seen that ReLU has a ramp-like structure, which can give you the continuous scalability. So that type of the function, nobody has thought that can be used as, a, as an activation function. So that was a problem because in Linet, basically uh, we have seen that sigmoid has been used as an activation function. Now you will see sigmoid has been commonly used for the, uh, the machine learning purpose. The tan hyperbolic or sigmoid, the general curvy curvature, if you see, that is not a performance wise scalability will be possible to achieve. You may add up a training data set okay, to improve the set machine learning performances, but what will happen after a certain stage, you will keep on adding up the data set, but the system performance will not improve. 
So for example, it may be saturated somewhere in 85%, 90% or 95%, but due to the performance wise scalability, you can achieve even nearby 100%, 200% in case of deep learning, it is possible, but the problem is that you require that kind of the data set. So the first initiative, which was taken by the PFAD in 2010, actually, uh, who is a very much famous scientist from the from Google, as well as he was a professor of Stanford University. So he came up with a with an idea that why not to launch a competition like ImageNet competition, where we will form a large database. Because in 2010, I will see the cloud-based approach started and we, we started to explore on the direction of the cloud analytics. Okay, storing data in cloud and doing the cloud analytics. So Web 2.0 gets a lot of band, lot of, lot of a lot of span, okay, in terms of the data storage. Because you see, when 1988, Linet was came up when ELA could develop. The, the other machine learning algorithms, like even support vector machine, was able to beat the performances of the Linet. And it got huge popularity in 1990s, especially even early, to, early 2000, even support vector machine was one of the leading uh, uh, machine learning method and highly regarded method uh, till from 2012 when Alex that developed by, by, by the team of the Geoffrey Hinton and his students. Then it actually started to get get uh, get its, its upscalation, like we can see nowadays. So, so that is the black you can see in the in the 1980s. We don't have the support of those internet facilities. Don't have the support of the cloud facilities. We don't have the support of the cloud analytics. We don't have the support of the GPU or TPU. Okay, so those were the problematic scenarios. There's a reason somehow, although the, it was a promising initiative has been taken by the Alicun, but it was not explored in a large extent. So that was one of the problem which we have seen in during in 1980 uh, scenario. So basically what happened that then we 1.0 came up, we, we started to explore with the internet. Okay, people, people learn about World Wide Web. Then uh, we, we got some hands practice that we can also make may make email as, as a part of our daily life. So uh, we started to creating our email email IDs and we, we we can send documents within a few minutes of time. So a lot of semi structured data also being generated. Okay, your login login ID, your activity time, and and your 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 overall sign out time. So it will be stored in a structured format, tabular format. Whereas whenever you are posting some text. You are you are attached, making some attachment of video, okay, or, or some uh, audio or some other other movement like PDF file, doc file. So this will basically will form the unstructured parts. So in a semi-structured and unstructured in an overall sorry structured and unstructured in overall forming a semi-structured data set. So abundances of the data set has been started. People started to realize that in near future the video images and videos will dominate mainly. Okay, and so we are we are mainly we, we, the world will be dominated by the unstructured and semi-structured data sets. So now we we are we are going to such an era where the digital world is expanding in an exponential growth. So you can see that now the number of the stars in the universe is equal to the number of the bits in the digital world. So that is the that is the perspective where you see that we require something like deep learning to to step in very early as early as possible. But then you see. Uh, we were 2.0 came up again. We have seen some the blog, the huge, huge storm of the data set because of the you see people started to explore in the social network like Facebook. Uh, people are using the professional network like LinkedIn. So we are continuously generating the the uh, uh, huge amount of the semi-structured data. Okay, so by our post image, posting images, videos, writing text. So it was it was a humongous growth in the data set we can observe. So that's the reason. The step of, of the ImageNet competition was very, very important that we require some optimum architectures to process them. So why not to use the, invite the worldwide top scientists, they can contribute their intuitions in terms of the development of the modern deep learning architectures, because theory is there, mathematics is there, but you have to develop the architectures that is very, very important. So uh, it, it was the credit goes to the uh, team of the Hinton and the students who came up with this kind of the optimum architecture, AlexNet, with the help of the, uh, thanks to NVIDIA, they came up in 2012 with, with uh, GPU. So, and then we have also seen uh, in 2016 TPU. So even even the Google Cola, which we are using here, yeah, we will get the support of the virtual GPU and GPUs are also there. So uh, you see that then the parallel I already highlighted in the first, first in my, in my first session that how the open source set also has started in the parallel if we see just to give you some background on that, because you see that uh, 
uh, in parallel, our computational uh, also uh, programming also growing up because you see, uh, in, in before 1990s, what happened that in, in, in 80s or even late 70s, we have these uh, software pack packages which you have to buy, okay, like SPSS facilities or SPSS or SAS, which were there, you can explore some sort of the statistical methodologies, but you require to buy them. So sometimes it becomes very much costly as well, because in terms of the developing country perspective, so if we see the impact of the open source era, which actually democratized the computational facilities among all the all, all the nations across the globe. Because you see, the education or the, or the technological learning should not be dominated by the developed countries. There are, there are people from the developing countries who has enough potential, but they require the resources. So these open source projects, okay, which has been led by the, 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 the Linux Group Foundations, they also played a very, very important role with the help of GNU-Fi projects. Um, they developed basically programming languages like R, where Ross Siak and Robert Gentleman played a very, very important role. And also John Camber, actually, who played a vital role in terms of launching R for the public use purpose in 2001. Then we also have seen the rise of the Weka. We also have seen the rise of the Python, uh, basically from the late 80s, where the Python got the proper shape. And you see all the scientists, it's curious to them that now, today's world, because of them, we are getting all the facilities of this open source era, uh, because uh, Keras, uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, all those frameworks are there. We are using, we can use them anytime, uh, anywhere in the world. Because you see, it's, it's the benefit of the open source era is, is not only it's freely available, but also you can contribute in the source code on being developer. So that kind of the facility nowadays we are getting and we are quite fortunate enough uh, to, to thankful to all those elegant scientists and their those great brains that nowadays due to the blessings of them, we are, we, are, we are actually getting the benefit being the part of the developing country still, whether you are in Kolkata or whether you are in Patna or whether in, 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 in Kathmandu doesn't matter. If you, you don't have to be part of Boston, but still you can get the facilities of all those elegant softwares and you can explore those things in a large extent. And parallel also, thanks to Internet of Things as well, you can make the labs in low cost facilities. So what happened that our, what our learning process has been uh, has been spread it over the developing countries and nowadays you can see whenever whenever you see the hackathons or something uh, something is happening even we can see that students from the remote colleges are also in the hackathons this is from my personal experiences i have seen because they are getting to those kind of the, the software facilities open source facilities which was not possible before the 90s era Okay, the only lack which has been there that is related to the hardware facilities, but I hope that in upcoming days we will see uh, that kind of the facilities will be available uniformly distributed for the all the nations which are the part of the developing countries. So anyway, so get back to our topic. So this is how we have seen that the, the development has been Pythonic platforms has been made so far and in 2015 uh, uh, TensorFlow has been developed by Google. In 2000, early 2017, PyTorch was also launched by uh, Facebook. And also we have seen that nowadays Google is also contributing to the development of PyTorch as well. So here we are using MXNet frameworks. So like we have done earlier last day, although we will also use the same thing for today's discussion as well. So first of all, what we will do, we will, we will um, download all the necessary modules, okay? And then we will start our, our data processing. So uh, now we are going to explore with the AlexNet. So basically, you can see the, the see the screen. So basically, what we are going to do, you know that whenever we are dealing with the deep learning, so what is happening there, that in, the, the hidden layers which are nearby the input input layer, what they will do, they will capture the basically the very uh, very low level features and the hidden layers which are very much close to the output layer. Okay, they will capture the high level features. So in case of the deep learning, the benefit is that. First of all, it, it is adjustable with the variable length data set, which was not possible in case of the machine learning. And in machine learning, you have to, uh, you must have, have some of the prominent feature extraction tool, which will assist the overall classification. But in deep learning, it is the intrinsic part of the overall process. You do not, you do not require to put some of the feature extractor, okay? It, it's, it's intrinsic process will capture all those things. So uh, let us, let us, uh, Go uh, go one by one. So this basically this one basically gives you the prominent comparison between the uh, Linux in the left hand side. You can see the Linux architecture is there, which basically you are giving 28 by 28 image as an input, and you can see that convolution layer five by five convolution layer followed by two, two cost two average pooling layer with stride two. Again, you see. 
there is a five by five by five convolutional layer is there. There, there are two five by five convolutional layer followed by two average pooling layer is there. And then finally, three fully connected layer to give you the predictions. For example, you want to predict the ambigit data set from zero to nine. So output will be possible 10 categories. Okay, and this is basically the, <coughs> the, Linet, uh, the, the AlexNet architecture in the right hand side. So uh, nevertheless, I have not to mention already have highlighted that in case of the Linet, the activation function was sigmoid function and uh, the data set this was not that much uh, uh, in of high order because you see, we don't uh, have the processing power in that time. So that was the limitations. But in case of the uh, AlexNet, I welcome all those issues because they have the adequate data sets, okay, and also having using they are using the uh, uh, value as the activation function, as well as you have the uh, <clears throat> the huge amount of the I mean the processing power as well because of the credit goes to Nvidia they came up with GPU. So one 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 uh, <clears throat> basically we can see that there is a max pooling layer followed by the convolutional layer. Okay, they will do their job. Okay, so there are, for example, one, two, three, four, uh, five, uh, three, three convolutional layer with three cos three size, which will, which will give you, uh, which will, which your kernel size is three cos three, and one convolutional layer with five cos five kernel size, and eleven cos eleven is another kernel size of the convolutional layer. And if you see, there are the max pooling layer, which having the basically this the kernel size of three cos three. So finally, what you will you will see that in the output, you will be able to see basically there are thousand categories after the fully connected layer at the output, you will be able to ex experience. Okay, so in our case, basically what we are going to do, we are we are providing the architecture here. Basically, if you see that we will start with the AlexNet first layer, which having the convolutional window shape, which we have discussed, that is 11 by 11, since most of the images uh, in ImageNet are more than the 10 times higher and wider than the immunized images. So what will happen that the objects in Im ImageNet data tend to occupy the more, uh, more number of the pixels. So consequently, a larger convolution window is required to capture the object. Okay, so the convolutional window shape in the second layer is reduced to five by five. That's what we have observed there. Now followed by three by three. So in addition, after the first and second and fifth convolutional layer, basically what is happening there that the network adds max pooling, maximum pooling layer. Okay, of the window of shape three cos three with a stride of two, which have which we have already explained. I told you during the architectural diagram because you see the input image having the dimension size of the three by 24 by 224 by 224. <coughs> then we are starting with the 11 by 11 window of the convolutional layer, okay? Followed by three by three max pooling layer with strike two. Then again, you see five by five convolutional layer with followed by three cos three max pooling layer with strike two. And again, you see three by three convolutional layer, padding one, three by three convolutional layer, three by three convolutional layer. And finally, the three cos three max pooling layer before going to the fully connected layer, okay? So this is what we have observed during the overall architecture, which has been developed for the AlexNet. So <clears throat> moreover, this AlexNet having the uh, having the ten times more convolutional channels, which you can see in case of the which we have, we have experienced in case of the Linet. So after the last convolutional layer, there will be two fully connected layers, okay, which having the four zero nine six outputs. So these huge fully connected layer produce the model parameters of near, nearly one GB. So due to the limited limited memory in the early GPUs, the original Linux Alex Net, what they do? They basically use the dual data design system. Okay, so they basically separated the task between two GPUs. Okay, but in our case, we are not going to do that because that was a very early stage of the GPU development of NVIDIA. That's the reason they have to segregate it, it in two parts. But in our case, we don't require to do that. We will be able to process the whole thing in a, in a, in a, in a using the same same GPU. So basically, the activation function already I have highlighted. We will use uh, Brelu, okay, instead of the sigma or the tan hyperbolic kind of function. And then it have used the basically they have used the uh, sigmoid. But here we are going to use the value rectifier linear limit. Although in case of value, you may remember during the first session when we have draw, we have generated the plots for value sigma or tan hyperbolic. So I told you that value having the problem of the vanishing gradient problem because at x equals to zero, value is already existing for the positive values of x. At x equals to zero, we will not be able to uh, produce any kind of the. Uh, 
and the differentiation will not be possible. So the vanishing gradient problem arrives. So there's a reason very small amount of the value should be added. For example, liquid value for, for the values x less than equals to zero, there is a very small amount of the value displayed by the liquid value. We call it as we, we, the value 0.001x. Uh, or for example, in case of the parametric value also we have discussed, it will also experience some of the very small amount of the value of alpha x where alpha greater than one. So that's the reason it is existing. Rest of the for x greater than zero, you know, the value will be x. So it will form a random like function. So if you do the differentiation of the value, it will form a unit state function, which we have experienced in, in the last, last session. So uh, I have shown you that how to do the differentiation and get the uh, they get the unit state function in, in this using the MXNet uh, framework, which is a Pythonic framework. So you have experienced a lot of use of the NumPy uh, modules was also there. So today we also experience similar kind of things. So basically, what we are going to do here, the, we, we know as per the, our understanding that AlexNet controls the model complexity of the fully connected layer by dropout, and which Linet only uses the web decay. Okay, so to update the data even further, the training loop of AlexNet added a great deal of image augmentation, such as you can do the clipping. Okay, so you can do the augmentation of the images data set because uh, you know that in case of deep learning, it is always preferable if we have the data model of 10 to the power 5. If you don't have that, we will try to expand the data set as much as we can because the activation functions like sigmoid or or, or the TNI hyperbolic is very good, still very good to data in order of 10 to the power 4. That's the reason machine learning algorithms capacity is very good whenever you have data in order of 10 to the power 4. But beyond that, like I told, that performance will be saturated. So in those era, we are going to use the deep learning, but make sure that the any linear model, okay, uh, and, and, and linear model plus machine learning algorithms, which often face a very common thing because we have talked, we talked about the uh, the variance and the bias trade-off. So basically, machine learning model often gets the problematic scenario which we face. That is the uh, high bias, okay, high bias kind of thing. In case of the um, deep learning, it is very common phenomena we will often face. That is high variance or overfitting. Okay, so we have to make sure that the algorithm is not only performing over the training data set well, but it is also doing in case of the validation. Okay, so in case of the machine learning, we have seen the splitting of the overall data 70% for the training purpose, 30% for the testing and validation purpose. In case of the deep learning, if you have the data in order of 10 to the power 5 or more, in that case, it is desirable that you are using 98% for the training purpose, 1% for validation, and 1% for the testing. Okay, if you have the data in order of 10 more than 10 to the power 5. Okay, otherwise, in case you are uh, you are using some kind of case of the transfer learning or you are just doing the flipping, okay, clipping of the color changing and you are appending the data set, then you may go with the normal practice 70 to 80 percent you may use for the training and rest of the case in validation and testing purpose. So, anyway, so it, it uh, there is no, I mean, uh, these are the basically the standard rule which are being which has been followed by the immediate eminent data scientist. So we, 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 it is better that if we, if we abide by them, and then we, are, we can get that kind of the good results. So anyway, first of all, these are the very basic common practice which we do in case of using the MXNet architecture, which will follow here as during our start of the coding portion. So installing the MXNet to provide the deep learning, deep learning which is a deep learning framework, then D2L to support other deep learning operations, now, person independent deep learning operations, then what we'll do from MXNet, we'll import NumPy and NumPy extension, which is NPX, NPN, NPX. Okay. NPX will provide all the support to do deep learning calculations. Then from MXNet.glue one, we will import NN. Okay. And then from D2L, we'll import MXNet as D2L. Then we'll do the setup, NPX.setup. And finally, we'll define NPX. Uh, once it, is, it has been done, we will define the sequential nn dot sequential, which will assign it with the name net. So basically, now what we'll do, we'll use a larger 11 by 11 window to capture the object, which will be the convolutional layer. So at the same time, we'll use a stride of four to greatly reduce overall height and width of the output. So here, the number of the output channels will be much larger than, than in Linux. Okay, so net dot add, so nn dot convolutional 2D. Okay, so first of all, we'll put the basically the channel information 96, kernel size will be 11, stride will be four, activation will be zero, obviously. Then we will add up the max pooling layer as per the architecture we have seen. So same thing we are doing here in coding. So in n dot max pool 2D, 
okay then what will do pool size will define as three stride will be two so now uh, we we'll make the target will be to make the computational window much more smaller so basically it, it is down the down sampling has been done by this kind of the pooling layer that is their task so the set of setting of the padding to two for the consistent height and width across the input and output will be possible and it will increase the number of the channel now you see the number of the channel from 96 to increase it has been increased to 256 so now we are using in a from D to 56, kernel size 5, padding 2, activation is reload there, and then you put in a max pool 2D, okay, you got the pool size is 3, and the stride will be 2. So now what will happen that these three successive convolutional layers, okay, and a smaller convolutional window will be generated. So except for the final convolutional layer, the number of output channel is further increased, okay. So now the max pooling layer are not used to reduce the overall height and width of, of the input after the first time, uh, first two convolution layers. So what will happen now? We as gatherers, we know that we are gradually increasing the number of the channels, okay? So what will happen? We have window size is reducing and the number of the channels are increasing. So in the next case, in an on 2D, we now have the 384 channels, okay, kernel size three, padding one, activation relu, and followed by again another, on 2D, 2D layer, okay, with 384 channel, okay, kernel size 3, padding 1, activation relu. So we are exactly following the architecture we have discussed earlier, okay. So once we are proceeding with that, again, now you see in the final convolutional layer, we can see that the 256 will be the basically the number of the channels, kernel size 3, padding 1, activation relu. So what will happen that here we can get the outputs of the fully connected layer is several times larger than the, in this case of the Linux. So what we will do, we will put some dropout layer. We have seen the efficacy of the dropout layer in the first session. Uh, so it will it will reduce, it will help us to reduce the overfitting scenarios or the high variance scenarios. Those are very common in case of the deep learning. So uh, we will, it will mitigate the overall scenario of the overfitting. So N N dot dense, okay, the number of the channels will be there for 096, comma, activation value, okay, comma, N N dot, N N, N N dot dropout, 0 0.5, okay, 50% probability. Okay, so we have to know that dropout has been expressed in terms of the probabilistic factor. Okay, so uh, if, if it is it is hundred percent or one, it will replace all the values. Okay, or uh, uh, all it will drop out. It will drop the all the all the new uh, all the neural nets which are participating in case of the transmission task. Or if it is having the uh, the zero, then it will pass everything. If it is having fifty percent value like here, it will chop out fifty percent. Okay, and it will can make, make pass of the new ones of the rest of the 50%. Then NN dot dense, okay, 4096 activation relu, comma NN dot dropout again 0 0.5. Okay, so now the output layer, since we are using the fashion in an IST, the number of classes will be 10. Okay, in, instead of the paper thousand, which has been shown in the paper, because if we use that, you going to predict those thousand classes. Okay, then it will take a lot of time. It will not be possible to show you in the small uh, amount of the time of the workshop. Okay, so that's the reason we are going with the ten classes. So output will be an end of tens ten. So the, you, you, so I am just sending this this portion of the code in your comment box as well, such that all of you can reproduce the result. Meanwhile, showing you those who are who know. This whole platform that's fine. Those who learned in last session, you may also can experience it. Or those who are new, they also can do it again. So this is what we are doing. You see, this is the coding window. Okay, well, what I am doing? I am pasting the code here. Okay, now what I will do? Okay, this is an answer button. I will click on that. Okay. So meanwhile, it is it is executing the code here. Okay, which will download all the necessary modules and, and from all the necessary. Um, um, architecture which we have defined now so i am i am meanwhile i am sending the code to your comment box okay just have a look on that okay so let me open the chat window i am pasting the code here So full portion has not gone because of the character limit. So let me check that how many portion it has been posted. Okay, let me check just a second. Let's try to you know, put channel and reduce the height. Okay, so I have to send the rest of the portion to you.
Okay, so I have also sent the rest of the portions as well. So kindly uh, look at the screen, okay? Let me go back to the screen. Kindly look at the screen and make sure that you are aligning the lines properly. Okay, because you see in case of the uh, Python or Pythonic framework, one common problem is that we you can't go with the uh, <coughs> indentation. Like in, in other programming, many programming languages, you can do the indentation. That means put some spacing as per your wish, okay? Uh, to make the code look much more stylish. But in Python, you can't do that. Okay, unnecessary indentation will end up with the indentation error. So unnecessary spacing you can't put there. And one benefit with the Colab is that you can, it, 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 by default, it is showing you the cursor, okay? From where you have to give the space, from where you have to start writing the code. But if you have the installed version, of the Anaconda and all those platforms, uh, uh, you will not be able to that kind of the facility. So that's the reason, make sure that you are not putting unnecessary spaces. Like you see, we are starting with net.add, okay? Then you see after the open parenthesis, we are starting the line in the from the next, okay, whenever we are following the next coding line, you see there are some spacing has been given there. And we are following that particular spacing. If we don't do that, indentation error will appear. So there's a reason we have to follow the proper protocols, okay? After writing function names, after during the execution of the loop, during the writing of the class names, okay? After whenever we have done that, after in the next line, we have to follow some kind of spacing protocol. So we follow that, okay? So this is a simple thing. It, 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 it's only the matter of practice. Once you get your hands dirty with the Python and Pythonic platforms, whether it is Keras, MXNet or TensorFlow, PyTorch, you will gradually, will, 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 get some idea that how, how to follow this kind of the, uh, avoid and follow this kind of the protocol and avoid the scenarios like the, like the indentation error. So anyway, let me check that in, in my demo window. Okay, so in demo window, the code has been executed. You see this blue tick has been, uh, sorry, green tick has been given there and uh, it took 36 seconds to execute it. So you see all the necessary things has been installed and downloaded, okay? So now we will, we will proceed to the next portion. So, <clears throat> So we constructed a single channel data, okay? So uh, we have uh, having the height and width of the 224, okay? To observe the output shape of each layer, it matches the LXNet architecture of figure two. This is the figure two, which we have which we have seen. So we exactly followed the overall architecture of the LXNet, okay, during the, during the defining them over the code, okay? So now what, uh, what is our task? Now we are, we are basically, creating an uniform distribution, okay, of 220, 224, 224, 222 will be the overall size, okay, and, and, and if you see, once we are printing the layer, the, it will give you the, all the layers, first layer, convolutional layer, okay, number of the channels, what is the dimension, okay, uh, then again, the pooling layer, what will happen, Okay, the world, world channels, dimensions, again, again, the con one layer, okay, what is the output shape, and the con two layer, what is the output shape, all those things you see as per the layer is the way we have defined, okay, the number of the convolution layers and pooling layer, their sequence has been followed, then dense layer, then dropout, what we have done in the dropout, 50% dropout has been done, again, you see the dense layer, okay, so here con zero means the first layer, okay, dense zero means the first dense layer, con zero means first convolution layer, pool zero means first, pulling layer, okay? Then con one output shape means the second convolutional layer because Python is a zero indexing language. So by default, it will start from zero, okay? So we have to we have to be careful about that, okay? So you see, again, same thing, if you see for after the, all the execution of the convolution and pulling layer operations, dense zero, that means the first dense layer output shape, okay, it has been given there. Again, you see followed by the dropout, which are dropout operation we have done, dropout zero layer has been mentioned. Then dense one, that means the second dense layer output shape has been mentioned there, followed by the dropout one output shape, that means the second dropout layer output shape has been mentioned there. And finally, the third dense layer output shape has been given there, which is the main objective. Fully With the fully connected layer, our target is to give you the possible classification of the possible train classes. So that has been done here. So what I'm doing, I am sending you this portion of the code, okay, in your, in your comment box as well. Also, I am running it my demo collab window, okay? So once you have done this execution, you see below there are two options, plus text, plus code. So in the plus code, you can click on there, you can paste the code, code, code here, okay? And you can run this portion. So once you click on the run cell, okay, you will get this kind of the output, okay? So architecture-wise, all the, all the outputs you will get, what are the number of the channels, what are the height and width of the, of the images you are processing, everything we will get, okay? 
So this is how you can you can you can you can deal with all those things. Let me also share it in your comment box as well. So I am sending you the code in your comment box section. So please go through them, reproduce the result. Already I have pasted it here. Okay. So now let me go back to my coding window. So now what will be our next task? Now next task will be the reading of data set. Okay. So now we will do the reading of data set. So in AlexNet is trained on the ImageNet paper. Okay, the way they have used in our case, we are going to use the fashion MNIST data set, okay, of the ImageNet model to converge, the convergence which we can require. Because you see that our case, we are going to give you the 10 possible classes, not the thousand classes. So we are doing like a little bit of uh, <clears throat> separate approach than the original AlexNet paper. Okay, because within the, within the given time, will not be otherwise will not be able to generate the output. So what we are seeing that in case of the one problem of the applying AlexNet directly on the fashion image data set is that the images having the lower resolution, having 28 by 28 images are there than the ImageNet image, images. Okay, so to make them work, what we have to do? So the one way is that you can up sample. Okay, so you, 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 if the fashion image data set having the dimension 28 by 28. So what we are doing, we are doing the up sampling to 24 by 224. Okay, but although generally it is not a very good practice, but we will do that. So every detailed information are given there. If you, apart from running the code, if you read those materials, you will get all the details, what we are doing, what are, what are the implications of each step, everything you will get. Okay, so once we have done that, then what we will do, we will basically perform the resizing, okay, with the resize argument. Now you see that the best size is 128. Okay, and we will we'll put all those things, for example, train iter or the test iterations, we'll define them because the best size initially, whenever we are starting, okay, we will resize it up to 224. So let us let us do that particular step. So we are starting here now. Let me let me first implement it my demo command window here. Okay. So you see, I am I am running this portion of the code. So it is downloading all the necessary data sets and all those things and up sampling has been done okay as, as per our de required desired data size okay so also i am sh sharing this portion of the code in your comment box as well requesting you to incorporate it so already paste it now let me go back to my comment window yeah. So anyway, so this portion has been done. Okay, now what we will do? We will do the training operation. So in case of the training operation, we can start the AlexNet and compare with the Linet. Okay, the main change here is the smaller use of the smaller landing rate and much slower training. Okay, due to the deeper and wider network and the higher image resolution, which is which is very costly convolutional process. Okay, so so let us see what we can do. So we what we are doing? You see the landing rate we have kept. 0.101. We have kept the epoch number of epoch 10. Okay. Okay. We have also defined the, uh, the D2 L dot train. Okay. Now under that, what are the parameters are given the net parameter train ID test? All those things we have uh, we have already defined. All those parameters we got to define in the code for successful execution. Already done number of people. Okay. L LR learning rate and then D2 L dot try GPU. So it will execute with the virtual GPU of cloud. We will collapse. So basically, once you get that, so training accuracy you can achieve that is 0 0.879. After resuming that is 87.9 percent training accuracy. You can test accuracy. You can see 0 0.886. That means 88.6 percent. So very good. We don't have the overfitting kind of effect. We are also getting even better result than the testing data set. And you see the overall. Uh, if you look at the graph, you see what the number of the epochs when we increased. You see this blue line. Okay, which is indicating the training loss is being reduced, which is the desirable case. And if you see that the training accuracy, the, the, the pink dotted line or the test accuracy, green dotted line, you can see their performance has been indicated here. So already you can see that the loss is 33.4% or 0 0.334 training accuracy already we have seen very satisfactory. Test accuracy is also very satisfactory. So this you can generate. So it will take, it may take some time to generate this plot, okay? So don't worry about it. These all are the runnable code. So I will definitely email you like I have done for my earlier cases, okay? The, all the, all these notebooks. So uh, as you can, you can try out generating the plot now or you can try out later as well. So let me also do it in case of my demo window of the demo AlexNet. So what I'm doing, I'm sharing it here, okay, clicking on the run cell button. Also, I am posting it in your comment box section as well. So please try it out there and see the beauty of the AlexNet, okay? 
So let me go back to the original screen there. Okay. So it, it let, let it be executed. So it will take some time, but once the execution is done, it will be formed from, it will form this kind of the plot. So it will keep on pl pl plotting it one by one epoch wise. Okay, so 10 epochs, so it will take some time. So anyway, so in a nutshell, we can say that the AlexNet has a similar kind of structure of the Linux, but there are more number of the convolutional layer, okay, larger parameter space to fit the large scale image net data sets. Okay, so that is the um, one, one point. And along with that, the today AlexNet is much, has been surpassed by many, much more architecture. There are many more new upcoming architectures are there which has surpassed the performances of the AlexNet for sure. And, and but it, it, it is a key step to, which is a very, very vital step, like I highlighted that in 2012, it actually made the revolution. People then, because of the AlexNet, people started to believe the effectiveness of the deep learning. Although there was mathematical development was sufficient, although we have seen that Linet came up, but Linet miserably failed to surpass the machine learning performances, like I highlighted. SVM even, they have sub surpassed the performances of the Linet. So the, the philosophy behind using the ReLU-like function, activation function, which is a continuous scalable function, ramp-like function. So that, that also worked very well. We got the support of the GPUs, okay, or TPUs, uh, later on TPUs, okay. And on the, and the cloud platform, the storing of the images in cloud, deployment of the cloud analytics, that also got the some, some goosebumps because of the, you see that this all developments are correlated with each other. Because if there was not the no kind of the cloud support in 2000, which is the, which is the beginning of the Web 2.0 era, we'll not be able to achieve this kind of things. Okay, like nowadays we talk about mobile net, which is which is the blessings of niche computing, which is the part of the uh, Web 3.0, which has started from 2014. So in Web 2.0, it was the era of basically the uh, the centralized computing. But nowadays we are talking about decentralized computing. Blockchain is there, federated learning is there. Many interesting things came up, but we have to understand the scenario of the 2012. Why it is so significant development? Okay, because it is a very much key step, key key step like I've highlighted here, that from shallow to deep network, we are being able to proceed. Because it was before 2012 era, it was only about the domination of the shallow network. But from 2012, thanks to Alex, and thanks to the brain of those great scientists, we are now being able to proceed towards the beauty of the deep learning. Okay, and then although it, it seems that there are very few more lines in, in, in the AlexNet implementation than in uh, Linet, but it took the academic community many years, like I was highlighting. It took 24 years to make those, those kind of the development. You may see that there are very subtle differences we are making. We are only enhancing the convolutional layer. In coding, we are making some changes. Okay, in side, we are some doing some upscaling. Okay, instead of average pooling, we are doing max pooling. Those are very simple steps or we are removing the activation sigmoid with the ReLU. But it took several, several years of time, 24 years of time in background, because you have to understand background, you require to develop a processor, processor, okay, hardware development is very, very important, not only the software part. Along with that, okay, we got the support of that kind of the cloud best high data in order of 10 to the power five. There were thousand images with thousand features. Thanks to Fei Fei Li for taking that kind of elegant steps to make this kind of the elegant databases and launch this kind of the competitions because all the top brands are participating there and they are contributing in the scientific developments because it's all about today's era is to learn by peer to peer interaction that's because none of us are the Aristotle of Plato those era are gone when people used to know everything because then the only the philosophy was existing and mathematical development was done from the philosophical assumption okay. But now it is, you see the field has expanded so much. So it's, a, it's an era of the specialization. And you see, because of this, those great contributions, you see the beauty of the benefits of this kind of elegant architecture we are being able to achieve. So thanks to those great brands. Now you see the dropout, ReLU and pre-processing were the other key steps in achieving excellent performance in computation tasks. So that is the overall part which we have been able to incorporate in case of the AlexNet. Now we'll move to another interesting deep learning, modern deep learning architecture, because today's topic is modern deep learning architecture. In the first session, we have covered up the very basics of the deep learning, along with the successful implementation of a real world data set. And I have shown you that how to use, take, how to use the download Kaggle data set and how to report your, your algorithm performances in Kaggle data sets. So we have learned all those things. So today we will mainly focusing on the modern deep learning architecture. So soon we will move towards the VGGNet. Okay, so I think one chat has come up. Okay, 
Okay, so our respected sir has put one important message for the participant. So kindly, uh, kindly look at that. Okay, our respected Subhutu Bhujunda sir has posted one important message for the participant. So kindly uh, submit to the, uh, <coughs> kindly do the needful there. Okay, so one form link is given there. Anyway, so let me go back to our uh, discussion. So now we are we are we are going to start our next portion uh, that is the uh, BGG net. Okay, so. We have seen the effectiveness of the AlexNet. So in the next, which came into the line, the next year, the development that is the BGGNet. Okay, either whatever the architectures we are we are basically experiencing here, either they have owned the ImageNet competition like AlexNet owned the ImageNet competition in 2012, or they are the runner. So these are the very top um, contribution from the all the topmost brain in that direction. So you see, while the AlexNet offered the empirical evidences that the, the CNNs can achieve the good results. It, it did not provide a very general template to guide the subsequent researchers in designing the new network. Okay, so the, in, in the following section, we are going to introducing that kind of several heuristic concepts that can be commonly used to design for the deep, deep neural network. Anybody else can, else can follow that particular structure to, to, uh, to form their own network. So that kind of the benefit which has been developed, that is uh, basically developed by the visual geometry group. As a reason, the abbreviated format is VGG. Okay, you call them as a visual geometry group and uh, belongs to Oxford University. So they did a very, very, very uh, great job in terms of coming up with a with the idea of the block-based block -based architecture, okay? So it is very much important uh, in terms of the implementation of the repeated structure where you can follow the block-based steps Okay, in the code for any deep learning framework development using loops and subroutines kind of thing. Okay, so if we see the overall, 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 okay, have a overall look on the VGG block. So basically, it's a building block of the classical CNN. Okay, convolutional neural network, which is a sequence of the following things. First of all, having the convolutional layer with padding to maintain the general proper resolution. Then followed by a nonlinearity, such as the value function you can use as a part of the nonlinearity. Then a pooling layer will be there. Okay, layer such as a max pooling layer will be there. Then followed by what we have to think that the one VGG block, basically, which consisting a sequence of the uh, convolutional layer, followed by uh, a, a, a maximum uh, pooling layer for the special down sampling purpose. In the original paper, which was developed, written by the Gisserman and the Simonian, okay, in 2000, 2014, basically. So the authors implemented, employed the convolutional with three cos three kernels with padding of one, keeping the height and weight, and followed by the two cos two max pooling with stride of two. Okay, so they, what they have done, they basically make half of the resolution for each block. So in each block code, we define the function of the VGG block to implement the overall one VGG block applications. Okay, so once this portion has been completed, then, then what we will do, the, the function that will take two arguments corresponding to the number of the convolutional layer. Okay, so the, what, what will be the name of those argument? Num cops, okay, and the output number of the output channel will be the num channel, so it will denote by that. So the first step will be the very basic step, okay, like implementing in, in, installing all the necessary modules. So pip install, MXNet, pip install D2L, then we will import from MXNet NP and MPX like we do in, in our general practice. We will also import from MXNet.glu and we will import in it like we do in other cases. Then finally, what we'll do from import from D2L, we'll import MXNet as D2L. Okay, then NPX.setup will we'll do. Then we have to define a VGG block. Okay, because block based approach, because we, we require a general structure such that anybody else across the globe who can get some inspiration that we also can form uh, uh, my own deep learning architecture. So that type of confidence has been came up with the very important contribution of the VGG net, okay, visual geometry group contribution was highly appreciated thanks to Gisarman, the brain of Gisarman and his guidances. So you see that we are, we are coming up with, so whenever we are defining a new block, so you see these things are not existing in the in the Pythonic platform. So you have to define a new function there. So what we are giving the name of the function that VGG underscore block. Under that, we are putting two parameters, number of convolution, num ops, and number of channels, okay? Then you see, like I was mentioning, that we have to follow the proper identification rule in Pythonic platforms, Python or Pythonic platforms. Otherwise, indentation error will come. And you see, we have to give the colon after the function name, 
proper definition of the function name and their parameters once once you have done in the next line when you go you have to put some spacing you see def after that you have to put some spacing in case you are omitting it indentation will come up so block equals to n dot sequence and we have defined that now we will run a for loop like already i've highlighted that there will be some looping operation will go on after defining the uh, the function name of the block okay then in range put all the num cops will be there then what you have to do you see again after the for loop okay after the colon sign in the next line once you go back again you have to put some spacing so like i was highlighting in the during the execution of the alex did that whenever you were writing the you have to follow some protocols for language wise there are different protocols so in case of the pythonic platform the one the major protocol is that you have to follow the indentation rules otherwise that error will come up so once we have started the function definition once we have proceeded in the next line put some space okay once you are starting a loop like for loop here again you have to put some space so block blk dot add okay once we have done we are adding up the convolutional layer followed by the, uh, the the other different layers so you see nn dot com to the number of the channels okay all the parameters we are highlighting kernel size three padding equals to one activation value as, as simple as that again you see block dot add we are adding the max pooling layer so nn dot max pool to the put the pooling size okay we are using two and stride equals to two then return block okay once it is done then you start the execution click on the run cell button and start the execution so i am requesting all of you to open a new notebook okay give the name demo vgg okay so like here also i am copy pasting it uh, going to going to create a new notebook like already it is there so what i am doing i am just put a name there okay for example demo vgg okay and we are executing over it so better to keep it in capital actually because it is the abbreviated format name so put it capital so now we are we are i'm posting it here and now i'm running it so meanwhile they will do the all the installations and creating the function then bgg underscore block function to execute the block operation also i am sending the code in your chat box okay so make sure that you are running it successfully ma'am songita ma'am please create a new win a new open open a new notebook and then run it do not run it along with the alexnet alexnet's notebook is different which we have run a demo a demo asset keep create a new notebook and then run it like i have shown you that create a notebook name for example demo vgg and then make sure that you are running it there so i have sent the code there kindly look at it okay okay it is possible to serve okay thank you so kindly check it huh? so let me let me go back to oh, demo vgg okay so now you can you will able to see that it already has run Okay, so you see the blue tick button, uh, green tick button has been given there. So thirty six second it took time to overall execution. So this portion we have done. We have done the necessary installations. We have created the block. Okay, then VGG. Okay, now we are going to the next portion. Okay, so uh, so uh, <coughs> just a second. Why is the notebook over here? Okay, now we will proceed to the next portion. So now we are going to create the BGG network. So we have seen that already this step has been completed for all, I believe. Now we are going to the next portion that is BGG network. So like the AlexNet or the Linet, the BGG network can be also be partitioned into two parts. The first part will mainly comprising of the convolution and pooling layer, and the second part will be the part of which comprising of the the basically the fully connected layer. Okay. So once we had we we, we, we had learned about them. so what we have to do next then the convolutional part of the this particular network which connects to several vgg blocks okay so which we can define as with the help of the vgg underscore block function which we have just created now so uh, in, uh, then what we have to do the following variable okay like on underscore arc which consisting of the number of the tuples so tuples means what we, what will be what will, what does it imply it implies that one part block okay so where each will contain two values first of all the number of the convolutional layers and the number of the output channels and which are which will basically you can precisely argument required to call them as the bgg um, block function bgg underscore block function and the fully connected part of the bgg network is quite identical which will be covered in alexnet so the original bgg network which had the almost the five convolutional blocks among the first two have the one convolutional layer in each and the latter will have the three three containing two convolutional layer in each so first block has 64 output channel which we because we have to understand the architectural structure 
and each subsequent sub blocks will double the number of the output channel until we are reaching the number 512. Okay. And since the network uses the eight conventional layer and the three fully connected layer, it is called as the BGG level. Why it is called as the BGG level? Because we are using eight convolutional layer and three fully connected layer. Okay. So this is the following figure, which you can see that we are forming a BGG 11 um, network structure. So AlexNet, okay, you can see the BGG block. So we are not writing anything because we have started the block concept, okay, with the help of the BGG underscore block function from 2014 era, the deep learning architecture started to use the block concept. So this block concept means there will be convolutional layer followed by the uh, VGG layers, uh, sorry, followed by the max pooling layer. So convolutional layer will be 3 cos 3 inside, max pooling layer will be 2 cos 2 inside with stride 2. And you see the finally we will we'll experience the fully connected layer at the output. Okay. So this is all about the, the VGG level where we have the 8 convolutional layer and 3 fully connected layers. So this picture and representation, I believe, will give you this some sort of idea. So leftmost picture is the AlexNet. Okay, and then we have in the, in the middle most picture is showing you the BGG block concept, okay, which comprises of the convolution and max pooling layer and the final picture, right, most picture, which has the BGG net architecture, okay. So now once we are done with it, then what we'll do? Now the main tar target will be that from AlexNet to BGG is designed from building the blocks. So what we'll do, we will define the one architecture, convolutional architecture, convolutional architecture, what we'll do? 164, 1, 128, 2, 256, 2, 252, and 2, 252. So we have to define all those things because we have to define the eight convolutional layers, okay? Along with, along with their corresponding number of channels, okay? So we have defined the count to one convolutional layer with 64 channels, one convolutional layer with 128 channel, one co two convolutional layer with 256 channel, two convolutional layer with two, 512 channel, and two convolutional layer with, again, 512 channel, okay? So this we have to define here. So in the next, uh, 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 in, uh, I am explain, uh, uh, executing the next portion first in my demo coding window. Okay, so it, you can see it is it has run successfully. Okay, you see the green tick came up there. Now what I am doing, I am going to send it to your comment box section as well. Okay, so already I pasted it there. Please check it out. So let me go back to the original screen. Okay, so this portion execution has been done. Okay. So now let me let me go back to VGGNet. Okay. Now what we have to do once we have implemented this portion, the VGG11 um, has been executed. So it is a very simple simple matter for executing a for loop in the convolutional architecture. So you see that we have defined the VGG conv architecture. So we are defining it. The function name is VGG conv architecture. Okay. So we are giving the definition. So under that we are putting the value. For example, let equals to nn dot sequential. Okay, then we are defining the convolutional part. So there will be the looping for loop will will execute the operation. So because we are forming a block like concept, okay, with the convolution layer and the uh, pooling layer, max pooling layer. So you see the for loop play a very, very important role there. So number of convolutions, common number of channels, okay, in, in conv architecture, then what will happen? Keep on adding net dot add. Okay, put the VGG block function, use the VGG block function, which we have defined during the execution of the of the first portion. So VGG underscore block, take the two parameters, a number number of convolution, num underscore cons, then num underscore channels, then define the fully connected part, okay? So in uh, n8 dot add, okay, then keep n8 dot n dot dense, put the number of channels, 4096, then keep the activation value, then add the dropout, okay? n dot dropout equals 0 0.5. Then again, n dot dense, okay? 4096 number of channel, then activation relu. Okay, mention that. Then keep the dropout time and dot dropout 0 0.5. Then give the and then dot dense. Okay, 10. Okay, now return net. So this portion is done. Then during the calling of the function, function, function definition has been done. Now we do the calling of the function. And net equals to BGG con mark. Okay, so this portion has been done. So let me execute this portion of the code in my demo VGG collab window, okay? And then I will send it to you as well. So you see, once I execute it, so code is correct. So this portion will run successfully. So let me send you in the chat box as well. Okay. So now please try it out there. Okay, so I have sent the code in your chat box. So kindly have a look at, look on, look at that. 
Okay. So once we have done this portion, now now our target to uh, go to the next portion. So basically, now our target will be to construct the a single channel data example with a height and width up to twenty four. Okay, to observe the output shape of each layer. Okay. So now we are, I am going to the next portion. So you see net dot initialize. Okay, we have came there. So once we are doing it. So basically, what we'll do x dot numpy dot random dot uniform. This is the uniform distribution we are we are we are basically defining there. So once we are defining it, so what will happen? Then <coughs> the uh, you will create the for loop. Okay, you will run the for loop. So for blk in net. Okay, x equals to block x print block dot name output shape. Okay, we will put some tabs that 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 the slash t will put some spacing. After the output shape, then it will print x dot shape. So you see sequential one like we have seen the past example in the Alex AlexNet architecture execution. So here it will also give you the outcome. So sequential one output space one sixty four one one two. Okay. So it will again sequential two output shape will also give you okay the number of the layers. Then what is the number of the channel one twenty eight. Then the dimensions okay fifty six by fifty six sequential three sequential four sequential five will do the necessary things okay accordingly. The number of the uh, layer, number of the channel, and the dimensions. Okay, mesh dimension. Then dense zero to, uh, output shape. If you see, okay, one dense layer with four zero six nine six will be the channel size. Then again, if dropout has been implemented there. Okay, again another dropout has been implemented there after the following another dense layer. Because in this way, different operations has been performed, and the finally. Execution of the one dense layer at the output, you are getting the ten possible outcome. So as we have seen that we we already have half the height and width of the each block, and finally reaching a height and width of seven before the flattening will do the representation for the processing by the fully connected part of the network. So this is how we have done. We have implemented this portion. Okay. So now we will proceed to the training. Training of the, of the next portion is the training. Okay, so let me let let me send you uh, this portion at your comment box section. Before that, just let me run this portion in my demo demo code window. Okay, just a second. So I am pasting this portion here. So once I will run it, you will be able to see all the block name and their necessary output shapes, block wise output shape. You will be able to print it. So see. Same thing, same result had been reproduced, so you can understand that these all codes are running code. Just make sure that you are you are uploading it in Colab properly. You are you are going through the theories, so you will be able to understand all the mathematical details and the theories, and you will be able to run these coding portions as well. So every all the three sixty knowledge you will have that theory, mathematical portion as well as the coding portion. So I am sending you the code in your comment box as well. So uh, make sure that you are be, you are running it successfully. So already already sent. So kindly have a look at them. So now what we will do? We will, we will proceed to the original window. So as we have seen that we have half the height and width of each block, and the finally reaching the height and width of seven before flattening the representation for processing by the fully connected part of the network. So we have done it. Now what we will do? We will proceed to the Training part of the network, so we have seen that the VGG11, okay, is 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 more computationally heavy than the AlexNet. We constructed a network with a smaller number of the channels, so this is more than sufficient for training on the fashion immunized dataset. Okay, so ratio four. Now what we are doing? Small corn bark. So we are putting the PR zero, PR one, and um, okay. So um, and for the PR in the convolutional. Architecture. So now you see net equals to VGG. We are running the VGG function over the small corn bar. So if let us let us run this small chunk of code. Okay, there. So in the demo window, I am pasting that. So you see this will also run successfully, and also I will also I will put it in your comment box section as well. Okay, so in the comment box section, I have also sent it there. Just have a look at it. So once we have implemented that part, let me go back to the original structure, an original uh, notebook. So once we have implemented, so basically, apart from using this, this kind of the slightly 
learning rate, which you see learning rate we are keeping at 0 0.05. Okay, in Alexa, we have kept it 0 0.01. So you can keep between 0 0.01 to 0 0.05. Okay, the model training is smaller than that of the AlexNet. Okay, so for example, the best size is 10. Uh, sorry, a number of people is 10, best size is 120. Then what you will do, you will define uh, the train iter, test iter under the d2l.load underscore data underscore fashion underscore MNIST, where you will put the best size and the resize equals to 24 as a parametric value. Then once you run run the final step, okay, with, with the parameters like net, train iter, test iter, number of epochs, learning rate, and d 2 L dot try GPU, you will get the loss at equals to 0.174, that means 17.4 percent training accuracy. You see, after the execution, you are getting 93.5 percent, 0.95. Very good accuracy, actually. Test accuracy, you see, very much nearby the training accuracy, 0.927, 92.7 percent. So, very good outcome we have got after implementing the VG net. So, and and if you if you see the overall picture of the this 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 graphical representation, so like we have seen that with the number of epoch, the training loss will be reduced, okay, which has been denoted by the blue line, and the training accuracy and the testing accuracy denoted with the green dotted line and the green dotted line is very good. So in case of training, get up there ninety training accuracy greater than ninety three percent, test accuracy greater than ninety two percent. So it's, it's a very good accuracy actually. So in know overall summary, if you see. That the BGG 11 has been able to construct using the reusable convolutional blocks or the block based concept basically started from here. And different BGG models can be defined by the differences in the number of the convolutional layers and output channels in the, each block. Okay, so the use of the block leads to very compact representation of the network definition. So it allows for efficient design of the complex networks. Okay, and finally. In their paper, in, in their BGG paper, okay, in 2014, the Simonian and the Gisselman experimented in the case of the various architectures, and in particular, they have found that the several layers of deep neural networks and narrow convolution three cos zero is much more effective than the fewer of wider convolution. Okay, so they are suggesting to go with these several layers of deep learning with narrow convolution, like use three three cos three kind of psychondial sizes, than going with the wider convolution approaches. Okay. So this portion of the code also I'm running in my case. So it will take some time to generate the plot because it will execute one by one epoch. So 10 epochs are there. So meanwhile, it is running here. Also, I'm sending you in the, uh, in the, in your, just a second, sorry. I have pasted the wrong chunk of code, just a second. Let me copy paste the code, original copy paste the code. I have wrongly double pasted the same thing, just a second. So if we are if you are putting it here, then it will keep on the execution on the stepwise execution. It will start. Meanwhile, let me send you this portion of the code in the comment box section. Just a second. So already done. So just please implement that part. So you will be able to experience the efficacy of the of the of the effectiveness of the VGG net as well. So this is we have seen so far that the VGG net also plays a very very vital role in terms of the execution of the, the modern deep learning architecture frameworks. Okay, so it will meanwhile it will execute it. So let me go back to the another interesting uh, notebook that is a ResNet. Okay, so ResNet notebook means uh, basically stands for the residual network. So we don't have much time left because we have end up by 1.30 p.m. So what I will do, I will, I'm just giving you a very, very, very brief theoretical overview and then going to the coding part, just will show you that how to run this code. So don't worry about it, all the mathematical details and theoretical details are there. So you see that as we design, we started to increasingly deeper networks, going to the deeper networks, it becomes quite imperative to understand that how the adding layers can increase the complexity of the Expressiveness of the network. So even more importantly, it is the it has the ability to design the network where the adding layers makes network strictly more expressive rather than just different. So to, to let us let us have a look on that that how this kind of the VGG uh, sorry residual network will look like. So you see we are starting with this X okay wet layer activation function is there again wet layer and function of X. So finally we are getting the outcome. But if we do like that. If we process this, if we, if we map the function of x minus x, we are starting from x and we are going to reach at function of x. So if, if, if x, f of x minus function of x has been passed through this weight layer, activation layer, weight layer, 
and residual part of x has been appended there. So now you see function of x minus x plus x at the end of the day you are achieving the function of x. Okay. So this is the trick has been followed basically. So we have a regular block. This is the this leftmost picture is a regular block, and this particular picture is the residual block. That's the reason we are saying the residual block because we are mapping the function of x minus x portion, where x is the input and function of x is your output. Okay. So now you see that we can we can do implement that portion of that thing by simply running on the PIP, installing MXNet architecture, then followed by the G2L architecture. Now, once you have done it, follow the, follow the standard protocols from MXNet importing NP or NPX, NumPy and NumPy extensions, then from MXNet.clone import, and then, okay, and then NPX setup you can do. Then define this particular residual block, okay? You have to define the function like we have done for the VGG or AXNet. So this residual block, once you define, so first of all, diff, I mean, initialization once you do so under this particular case put those parameter parameter value cell number of channels use one cross one convolution false okay and then stride one and this keyword arguments okay so th that that is shown as the double asterisk kw args keyword arguments then super dot init put the keyword argument then define the self con layers self dot con one self con dot two putting the proper number of the channels candle size padding and this number of stride information then just use start with the if loop okay then you go back if you fill statement so we'll start so if use one cross one con then what will happen self there will be another convolutional layer which I will be formed okay with the nn dot con two number of channel but candle size will be one in that case strides equals to strides what are the standard protocol then self dot con two define the number of change <coughs> sorry then then go to the if after the statement go to the else what will happen self dot con none so you will not execute this convolutional layer until or unless you are using one cross one convolutional layer okay which is basically uh, uh, the 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 uh, append in before the final activation layer okay this one cross one convolutional layer that i will show during that architectural picture that whenever we are doing the residual operation one is a regular block and one is a residual block operation so before the final layer what we are doing we are processing function of minus x mapping and at the final stage we are adding plus x so function of x minus x plus x so minus x plus x will be will be opted out Will, will, be, will be chopped out so function of x will be your outcome okay so mapping is being done throughout the block is function of x minus x so that's the reason we call it as residual network because we proceed with the residual part okay so and the final stage during the, when we see the block like architecture that one cross one convolutional layer will be added that's the reason this if statement is doing that it, it use con one cross one con self dot con three and then the con 2d number of channel kernel equals to one stride equals to right otherwise none then self dot bn one the best normalization is the new introduction has been done here so uh, self dot bn two and then dot batch norm then definition of the forward self comma x okay y equals to npx or relu function will be used for a first batch normalization and then you define it for the second batch normalization okay and finally, if self dot con three, you, which you step uh, followed whenever you are executing this one cross one convolutional layer during the output, okay, x equals to self dot con three return in, in, in px value y plus x. That means function of x minus x, which is y plus x. Okay, that will be the return in px dot value during the final execution of the uh, activation function. So this once we implement it, just before sending you the code, I'm just showing you this. Figure. So this is a regular block architecture. Okay, so ResNet block. This is basically with one cross one convolution and without one cross one convolution. So you see, we are adding this one cross one convolution part before the final activation function value. Okay, we are adding it there. And this particular step, three cross three convolution layer batch norm, and then value three cross three convolution batch norm. So two batch normalization is there. That's the reason BN one and BN two we have defined. Okay, and Within that, this is the execution of the function of x minus x. Then finally, the x is there, one cross one convolution. This is being added there. Okay. So this is much more bigger picture of the ResNet block with and without one cross one convolution. Okay. And this is the simplest picture which we have which we have defined here as a form of the mathematical function. Okay. So first we have shown in the form of the mathematical function, then we are showing in the form of the network blocks architectural side. So let me send you this portion of the code to all of you and also run in my case as well. So let, let us open in another new notebook. Okay, give them the name as the 
demo. Okay. So, so demo Alexa, let me close it. Otherwise, too many things will create the problem, make the system slow. Okay, so keep it as demo resonate. Okay. Just a second. It is cash flow is not demo. Resonate. So meanwhile, it is it is executing here also. Meanwhile, it is executing here. Let me send you in your comment box as well this portion of the code. Okay, please make sure that you are running it successfully. Okay. So meanwhile, you are running it. Let me go back to our original notebook. Okay, so I am coming here now. Where is the original notebook here? Okay. So now what will happen? So next uh, we have we have, I have already shown you the resonant block with and without one cross one convolution. So now what we'll do? Now we will define the block with residuals. Okay, then block initialization will be done. Then finally we'll form a random distribution. Okay. So once you check the block set, that is 4366 as per our definition. So this is the simplest step, okay, of defining the uniform distribution with the proper block size. So this portion of the execution has been done. So let us run this portion. So it will print the block block shape, okay, which we have defined there. Let me send you the code in your comment box. So let me go back to the original screen. Okay, so once we have done with that particular step, just a second, what is this net? Okay, now what we'll do, we can also, we, have, we also have two option to half the output size and width by increasing the number of the output channel. That also you can do by increasing the number of the output channel, we can make the half of the size of the output. So how can you do that? By block equals rest level six, okay, use one cross one convolution equals to two. So that was first block was done with the without one cross one convolution. Here we are doing one cross one convolution. It has the reason is true. Stride equals to two, block dot initialize. Now shape use the shape. Okay. So you will get the desired outcome here as well. So let me run it in case of my demo resonate window. So one we have run without using one cross one in convolutional window, and another one we have using it, we are doing it. So this is as a reason use underscore one cross one con equals to true there. So now let me back, go back to original notebook. Okay, so this is here. Okay, just a second. Let me send it to your comment box as well. Okay, so already sent it. So just a second. So this is my original notebook. So now we are we are we'll, we'll start the discussion on the ResNet angle. So first two layers of the ResNet are same as those of the Google Linet. So Google Linet. Uh, we don't have the this kind of the batch normalization. The seven cross seven, seven convolutional layer with 64 output channel with the stride two followed by three cross three maximum pulling layer will be there with a stride two. So the difference is that main difference, like which I was mentioning, that there is the batch normalization layer added after the each convolution layer of the resnet. Okay. So according to define it, and in net equals to nn dot sequential net dot add con nn dot con 2d. Okay. Uh, put the put the number of channel channel size seven stride two padding three then do the nn dot batch normalization then do nn dot activation relu function will be used then just use the max pull to the layer pull size three stride two padding one okay just use this portion okay let me run in my demo window as well so it is also executed here okay so it is running successfully let me send you in your chat box as well so you will be able to see the that all these are the runnable functional conditions. So now, once we have executed this portion, let me go back to the original ResNet part. So now we will implement the module with uh, that, that that there we will do the PCL processing of the first module part. So once we are using that, you, you see the function calling we are doing, what we have defined during the beginning of our ResNet discussion, the ResNet underscore block function, we are calling it here. Sorry, we are defining it here. So number of channels, number of residuals, and the first block will be false. So a block equals to dot sequential. Now we are, we are basically running the for loop. So I in range number of residuals. So for if I equals to zero and not the first block, block will add the residuals number of channels use one cross one convolutional two and stride two otherwise it will only run with the block dot add residual number of channels so it will not add this part use one cross one convolution so either it will add up 
at the final stage of the one cross one convolution, or it will run with the residual part, which is function of x minus x part. That means by omitting one cross one convolutional window. Okay, and then finally return BLK. Okay, so this is a very very important step of running the first module. Okay, so let me let me uh, run it in my comment in my coding window. So it will run successfully. You see, it has run successfully. Now also I am sending you in your chat box as well. Okay, so this portion we have we have done with with with, with quite success. Okay, now let us move to the next part. Now we will add all the modules to the ResNet after executing the first module. So here you see the two restful blocks are used for each module. So net dot add ResNet underscore block sixty four comma two first block equals to true ResNet block one twenty eight comma two ResNet block two fifty six comma two and then finally ResNet block five twelve comma two. So here we are doing we are adding up all the necessary modules related to ResNet. Okay, so let me uh, put it in your in your uh, in my in my uh, demo ResNet uh, notebook, also sending you in your comment box as well. You will make sure you are running it successfully. So almost the time is over. So I am also at the end of the ResNet execution. So let me quickly wrap it up. So now finally, what we'll do? Just like the Google Linet, okay, we'll add a global average pooling layer will be there. Okay, followed by the fully connected layer. Okay, so in net dot at nn dot global average pooling layer at the final stage, pool two D, where the nn dot dense ten will be your at the output layer. So at the final stage. Just a second. Let me click on plus code. Let me run it. Okay, so it will execute the output as per the desired requirement. So once we are done with it, okay. So in the you see this is the basic basic structure okay seven cross seven we are starting this is a ResNet eighteen you are showing it so then followed by batch normalization then three cross three max pooling layer then the blocks okay which will repeat it thrice then finally the global average pooling layer and finally the fully connected layer so remember that we are using here the ResNet eighteen okay there are four convolutional layer in each of the cases you are. You, you, in each of the module you are excluding, but but remember that you are using excluding the one cross one convolutional layer. Okay, so together with the first seven cross seven convolutional layer and the final con fully connected layer, we are basically forming the eighteen layers in total. That's the reason it is called as the ResNet eighteen. Okay, this is the structure of the ResNet eighteen architecture. So now what we will do? We will check the shape of the each architectural output like we have done in earlier cases as well. So you see the demo ResNet. I'm, I'm pasting it here to check you the give you the output one by one architectural output you see so con5 output shape batch norm output shape relu output shape all those output shape till all the sequential layer output shape pool output shape and finally dense layer output shape all those things you will be able to get from by printing this portion by executing this portion of the code okay let me send you in your comment box as well and finally, we are going to generate the plot. Okay, so this plot, as I told you, that this will take some time because it will take the epoch-wise execution. So let me go back to my Linux inbox. Okay, so now we will train the ResNet on the fashion image dataset just like before, and we will execute this portion of the code. So you see, in my case, gradually the plot is being generated. Okay, so in my notebook, I, during the preparation of the notebook. I generated the plot again. I wrongly clicked on this button. So you see, it is still executing. Okay, so it will take some time. So already half of the plot is being generated. So what I have done, what I, I actually saved this image during my early execution. So I pasted it here just to show you that this output we are going to get. Okay, this plot will form this kind of the output. You see, still the code is running here. So you see, the, with the number of the epochs, the training error will, the training loss will reduce, like we have seen it with, you see, this blue line. This pink dotted line will show you the training accuracy and green dotted line with the test accuracy because we are getting a very good uh, margin of the accuracy. Okay, so uh, just let me send you this portion of the code which you will be able to run it. So as I told you, this will take some time. So make sure that we are keeping the learning rate 0 0.05, number of the epochs are 10 and the best size is 256. Then what we are doing, when, whenever we are executing the test iter and uh, storing the result in train iter and test iter, we are taking the best size and making it resize as 96. Then we are plotting it with the help of the parameters like net, net, train iter, test iter, 
number of epochs learning rate and d12 dot tri gpu okay so if i do wait paste it here it will keep on executing it will take some time it may take two to three year two to three hours okay to uh, execute this overall code okay to generate the plot so this is what we are also i have sent you in your comment box so please try it out so nothing to worry about it as per our today's discussion okay so that's all whatever we have discussed so far so finally let me conclude the session okay before just uh, wrapping it up so we have seen the efficacy of the resnet as well so in a, in a nutshell what we can conclude that the nested functional classes are desirable okay learning an additional layer in deep neural network neural network as an identity function should be made easy and then the final residual mapping which we have done using the function of x minus x by omitting the one cross one convolution layer can learn the identity function much more easily such as pushing the parameters from weight layer to zero and then we can train an effective deep neural network by adding the residual blocks okay and input can forward the propagate faster through the residual function across the layer and ResNet had a major influence on the designing of the subsequent deep neural networks, both on the convolution as well as the sequential nature. So that's all about today's discussion. So today we have talked about the model deep learning architecture, which includes AlexNet, VGNet, and the ResNet. Okay, I have said I have tried my best to uh, to help you all the execution of the all portion of the code. So thank you very much for your kind patience. And I will also email like I have done for my first session. I will also email these three notebooks to all of you. Please practice at your home. All the theory and coding portion has been added there. So thank you very much for inviting me here. Thanks for the kind invitation. And thanks to the, all the participants for their kind patience. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for the nice presentation. On behalf of uh, the EC department, Narula Institute of Technology, on behalf of the organizing team, we would like to felicitate sir with this small memento as a token of respect kindly accept sir and uh, uh, over to showman sir would you like to yes yes uh, only one thing that uh, participants have any questions they can ask or they can contact sir in future i have the contact uh, details of sir I can share with you. And and kindly also, share with all the participants, sir. Kindly share with you. Yes, yes. Thank you. And already I have shared the notebook of uh, last Saturday's notebook. Sir has already mailed to me. I hope participants have got this mail. I have shared the notebook where all this uh, programming and example has been done. So you can take help from that. Uh, with this, I think we should end this session here. So I'll request host to end the session okay and thank you sir for being with us okay we are uh, hope for more sessions in uh, coming workshop or seminar okay thank you very much for your kind invitation thank you very much sir. thanks a lot okay okay thank you so host you can now from this session host obhijit obhijit are you there So should I leave, sir? Yes, sir. Email okay. Leave. Okay. No thank you. Email thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I will email you the notebook, sir. Okay. Thank you. Bye, sir.